that this should not be happening. The drum is in the process of emptying the pond. Welcome back to another video guys, so it's a good job I come up here so I'm just going to come out and just give a little bit of an update video what I've been up to and um, things that i got planned for the season coming up and as I'm walking up garden I can hear this gushing of water so as soon as I heard it I knew exactly what it was so the drum filter was emptying my pond out so I come in pump spinning, um, spray bar spraying everywhere, emptying outside so it appears that the float switch is not quite set right so I'm going to have to have a play about with that um, and try and get that set because it seems that what it does it gets to a point where once it's lowered past a certain point on the float switch um, obviously the the spray pump will kick in um, to clean the drum. Now as soon as the drum's clear the pump is supposed to kick back out once the water level has risen back up and um, to, to lift the float back up. So clearly there wasn't enough water in the system once the drum had been cleaned to lift the float back up so I'm going to have to have a play about and get um, a suitable water level that I know that once the drum has finished cleaning it's not going to continuously keep spraying because it has happened to me a couple of times where it's just continuously carried on spraying once it's cleaned the drum but I'm just going to have to find that happy water level um, so I don't keep doing it and just have a play about where um, it floats which a bit but I'll show you um, I don't I don't know if any of you people have seen inside these um, filter drums before but I'll show you inside it and I'll show you the float switch. So here we've got his, um, inside his drum. Let's get rid of this lid. <coughs> and you'll see that's his float switch just down the side there. Um, now at the moment the float switch is above. Uh, at the moment the water level is up and the float switch is deactivated but that's purely because um, the pump isn't running so what happens is in these is once you switch pump on obviously the water level in the drum drops down slightly so once that happens the water level drops the float drops too which activates the spray bar so I'm going to have to um, either lower the float switch so it doesn't keep happening or I'm going to have to use a high water level and make sure that me auto top up um, over here keeps the water line at the same height um, when when the pump is running so so at the moment that's where the water line is sat um, well if we go out to the pond you'll see that the water level has dropped down from where it should be and that's just purely because that um, pressure pump's been been running can't have been running long because it's not dropped too much you can see fish down here they always seem to start moving about when the pump gets turned off it's like they know well I suppose they do because there's no they know um, the water's not flowing but they always seem curious and seem to start swimming about more when the pump gets turned off and Obviously they know something's not, not right. Well they are doing well. Um, I've been doing regular water checks and 
they are now I was having trouble with my nitrites but they have now got to a point where um, they've stabilized so I will show you what my results have been um, but first I need to first I need to see to this water level and get this to the correct height right then so this pump's turned off so I need to adjust this float valve in here now to um, let it fill up to a point where I'm happy with the water line in the pond so what I'll do I shall adjust that now and just let that fill up and I'll be back to you when it's um, filled up right so what I've done now it's still not quite up to the correct height in the pond um, so it could do with coming up higher but what I need this to do is I need it to be running to set the height correctly so I've disconnected the drum uh, motor and the pressure pump from this control box so when I turn um, the, the pond pump back on now the water level will drop and the float will drop but because they're disconnected the motor won't turn and the spray bar won't kick in so we're not going to get wet through but it means we'll be able to set the height um, height more correctly so I'll turn this pump back on the water level will now start to drop as you will see and the floats dropped so just let that run so now because the water levels dropped this auto top up is kicked back in so now that will raise the height to where it should be while the pond is running because obviously we want this level to be um, at the height when the pond pump's running not when it's sat still so I'm going to let that fill up let it get to the right height um, the water level height because in here um, the water level the, run, the working water level in these drums should be um, they have a tolerance of one centimetre below this waste chute so I'm going to let it get to the right height and then I will adjust the flow both in the top up tank and the float switch to suit that water level and then we should be pretty much good to go and not encounter any more future problems so I'll let that top up while that's topping up I'm going to talk through um, what I've been doing with my tests and what my upcoming plans are for the uh, upcoming season right then guys so while that's doing, I shall run you through what I've been doing. So, bought myself a ring binder just so I could keep track of um, all my testing, etc., things like that. Um, printed myself out some some charts. And we'll show you what we've got. So. Printed myself out a few test charts and just been filling them in week by week so I shall show you what I've been testing so here's my chart then guys so I started it boxing day and my latest test is today so we've got as ammonia, as nitrite, as nitrate, as pH um, it's KH and it's GH across the top so all the way through um, I've had zero ammonia now my nitrite um, obviously I did do a video um, previously that I've been having a few nitrite issues um, so they range from 0 0.5 and then down here on the 9th of January from 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 um, now I made a note here on the 2nd of January 
that I did a water change but also I added 260 millilitres of filter bugs um, just to try and combat the nitrite issues um, also I was reading at the time I was reading 5.0 um, nitrate the pH is it's always been stable between 7.5 and 8 and that's that's not changed at all um, my KH has been at 4 my GH has been at 6 um, from the 9th of January to the 23rd I'm not bothered testing those for the simple fact that uh, my pH I've not seen any changes in it whatsoever um, and it's very unlikely that during this short time um, that that KH is going to change dramatically during this period of time and um, probably will start lowering eventually um, but I didn't feel the need to to test those parameters during this time frame so I didn't bother with that um, I also, when I started the chart, tested my tap water for um, for these parameters as well. So, as you can see, my pH is seven, um, no nitrates or nitrites. Um, I didn't have any ammonia. I forgot to put that in. Um, my KH was four and my GH was seven. Why that has fluctuated, um, I'm not quite sure. Um, between my tap water and my pond, I don't, I don't quite know with that one. Um, but yeah, as you can see, um, from adding filter bugs and doing um, partial water changes, you can see like that from the 19th, I've been testing zero on everything so zero ammonia, zero nitrite, zero nitrates and again my pH has stayed stable and today same results again so it looks like that we are on the right track obviously I, it's important this time of year to keep a really close eye on these parameters due to beneficial bacteria basically being non-existent um, but also as the weather does start to gradually increase in temperature um, things are slowly going to start to become more active with nasty bacteria and things like that so that's why it's so important to keep an eye on these parameters um, through these winter periods and like coming as we start approaching spring as well so um, even though where I live um, up in north um, at the minute if I can spin you around I'll show you we are still cold temperatures so the pond's at 3.2 and the outside temp is 4.2 so we've got a degree difference there in temperature so still very very cold up here so yeah that's what my parameters have been at um, I'm keeping an eye on them um, as I said before it looks as though they're going in the right direction um, so I'll keep monitoring that I've still got plenty more sheets to go through printing myself out a year's worth so that's that so I'll get them put away and I, I would recommend that you um, knock yourselves up somewhat like this just so you can keep track of your water parameters so you can you know um, mark everything and write down your results and things like that it comes in really handy with looking back so you can identify any issues at a particular time of year and things like that so yeah right then so future plans um, for the upcoming season well I did have a plan um, but that plan has gone down drain so as you may know previously in one of the other videos I mentioned that I was planning on installing a heat pump well that plan has gone out of window because I've just had to buy a missus a new car <laughs> so that's not going to be this season, uh, the upcoming season now, so that one has gone straight down the swanee. So she's happy, so I'm happy. Happy wife, happy life. Um, so what I am going to do is I'm going to split my returns up on my pond. So as you know I've got three returns, I've got um, two high level and one low level. So 
oh and also there's a shower to go in um, come springtime so for one pump supplying those four returns back to the pond it's going to be a big ask so what we plan is is I shall spin you out and I shall show you right so currently this is what we've got we've got the one pump that pulls water through the bio which comes from the drum um, and then returns back to three returns and, and eventually a shower now to get optimum flow through those returns I'm having to really crank the gate valves to split the flow between the returns so it's not optimum because I'm not getting too good of a flow um, through my returns as, as, as much as I'd like to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be swapping this, this is a 30,000 I'm going to be taking this 30,000 out and swapping this for a 20,000 pump I think and also what I'm going to do is on my drum so it's still going to be still going to be um, flowing through me from the drum through me bio and back to two of the returns but then on my drum just under here I'm going to on the clean side just round about there in the centre of the screen somewhere I'm going to install a two inch tank connector which will then feed on um, to another pump um, probably this 30,000 so I'm going to swap that for 20,000 and then that 30,000 will be fed from my drum filter um, what will happen then is it will follow the same route um, but obviously it will then feed the shower and the very far return um, so because it's a 30,000 it's got a greater pump head on it so that will be more suitable for feeding that far return um, right on the end of the pond so that's what that will do feed the far return and the shower put plenty of flow over the shower and then the pump what goes back in there the 20,000 will feed the closest two returns um, the high level and the low level that way it's going to give me plenty of flow round um, round my round the pond and I have done the calculations so I know, I know I've only got one four inch drain um, and a three inch skimmer line but I have done the calculations with the pipe diameters um, and the head and things like that and through my one bottom drain and my skimmer line with the length of pipe with the length of this pipe what is in from the bottom drain to the filter and the fittings it will supply I think it was about 43,000 litres per hour um, into the drum filter now this screen um, as you may remember I swapped this over from the tw from the 20,000 um, screen to this high flow screen which is which gives anywhere between 25 and 30,000 litres per hour um, to pass through it so all that now bear in mind the pumps aren't going to be on maximum so it's not as though the pumps are going to be empty in the tank all right so I'm not going to be worrying about that so it's gonna have plenty of water flowing into it and um, the pumps aren't going to be on maximum um, but again it's going to give me a nice flow around my pond so I think that's going to be the best way around it um, I was thinking about rearranging these filters and putting um, some over there once I get rid of that barbecue um, I was thinking about putting them over there but I can't be bothered it's too much work now now I've got all pipes in place on the ground and everything I've got everything set up now so I'm, I'm not even going to mess about with it I'm just going to get another two inch um, tank connector on that drum to feed another pump so I can split my returns up and get a much better flow around the pond so that's going to be my plan so heat pump that's one um, but I'm going to get this these returns sorted out 
um, bio going like a garden 100 litres of K1 in there so come spring time that's going to allow me to um, feed a relatively good amount of food and start getting some fish growing and I'm still yet to receive my new fish so um, I've still got plenty of things coming on in the new season so I don't fell off at face of earth I've just not had much to report um, I'm going to let this finish getting up to level um, and then call it a night I think I'll just have to have a little tweak with that float switch once it's up to the correct water level and then go from there um, we'll take a walk outside You see the fish now they know the um, water is running again now they've all gathered there they're not stupid but looking at this water height in the pond now it's slowly getting up to its marked level where I want it oh yeah we'll get there guys eventually all nice and lit up at night time obviously I've still got to get me garden sorted come spring not doing it in this weather because it's freezing if you're down south or uh, on um, or for them on Isle of Wight you don't have the same problems as up as us up here you get lovely weather we get like subpar three degree temperatures most of the time down at freezing or zero so <laughs> right that's going to be me for tonight guys I'm going to finish with this water level I'm going to get back inside get warm get a cup of tea and get a bit of snap I think so I'll catch you again guys